Hello everybody, this is Frody to Bobbit here, and welcome back to Train Simulator 3, where today we'll be taking a look at the newly released Model Train Chicago Route. Yes, we have another model route. Yeah, it actually just so happens that this route was actually made by the same guy who made the Fremont Mills route. And yeah, he has gone and made yet another model trains route, this time set in Chicago. And Man, we got a lot of good stuff in this route. A lot of trains and rolling stock. Uh, and the route stuff is pretty cool, too. In fact, I might even already go as far as to say as this route is worth the $3 price tag alone just for the amount of content they get in terms of the engines, rolling stock, and everything. And the route is pretty cool, too, as we will see in just a bit. So, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at everything they get here in the Train Simulator 3 Model Train Chicago DLC. But before we do that, be sure to check out my Fiverr gig. Link is in the description. Alright, so first we have something that I'm sure you'll all be very excited for, and that is the introduction of Metra. Yes, that is right. I think this might be the first time in any trains game that we have Metra in a route, which does of course make sense. This route is based in Chicago, and Metra is the primary commuter rail carrier for the city of Chicago. Uh, we have a couple of Metra trains here, uh, so, so with the main one I'm sure you'll all be excited for. Uh, this is the Metra F40. Yeah, we have another F40 here in Trains 3. Uh, for the first time, not an Amtrak F40, but a Metra F40. Yes, look at this. Okay, the model isn't the best. I'm guessing this is an older model from the well, Trains game. I like that the, uh, the wheel book is actually look nicely detailed, but then everything else is kind of like not so nicely detailed, but eh. It's Metra F40, and I'm sure you'll all be excited for this nonetheless. And, um, it still looks pretty good, though, all things considered, at least, you know, considering this is a trains game. So, yeah, it's got smoke coming out, which is pretty cool. Alright, let's take a look at the interior cab, and, oh, surprisingly, we actually have a cab that... Is this the correct cab, by the way? Is this the... Wait, is this actually an F40 cab? I mean, the windows look correct. Is this actually what the Metra F40 has for its cab? If it is, that's actually pretty cool. I'm surprised we didn't get like the default F40 cab or something. We actually got a new or a different cab with this one. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen this particular cab before. So, uh, do correct if I'm wrong, of course. But I do believe that this is the cab of the Metra F40 in real life. Well, at least we created here in trains. I mean, yeah, obviously the cab is still quite dated. The modeling isn't very good. Um... But, eh, I'm really surprised they go with, like, the default F40 cab like you would see in the Amtrak F40. Alright, let's do the horn and the bell. Ooh, very see horn there. And we get an E-bell, alright. Real good, the, there you go then, the Metra F40. Alright, well, up next we have some Metro coaches, and yeah, I may as well address the elephant in the room. Uh, as cool as these coaches look, these are not the correct coaches at all, which is, um, I, I guess I'm not, I'm not really sure what to make of these. So, so these coaches are obviously the Bombardier bi-level coaches, which Metro does not have. There are a lot of commuter railroads in America that use these type of coaches, but Metro is not one of them. Uh, Metra is, in fact, famous for using gallery coaches, which looks something, well, they, they look something a lot different from these, and I may or may not put it up on the screen to show you what the gallery coaches actually look like, or maybe I'll put a comment in the section, or put a comment down below with a link of what the gallery coaches look like. Um, and even the paint scheme is not is a completely fictional design. Yeah, this, this paint scheme, like this two-tone white and blue paint job, uh, totally fictional, does not exist in real life, so... Um, now, I don't know if, I guess, I don't know if they just, like, weren't any gallery coaches available. I think there are uh, some gallery coaches that would be already available on the, um, uh, on the download station. But, uh, obviously, I don't think there are any gallery coaches in the Metra livery. So, I guess they did the next best thing. Grab some gallery coaches, or no, some, some coaches 
uh, some Bombardier by level coaches in a fictional Metro paint scheme. Now, I will say this though. Uh, if this were a real life route, then I would be like, why? Why in the world have you not got the correct Metro coaches? Why do we have Bombardier by level coaches in a Metro paint scheme that doesn't even exist? Like, yeah, if this was like the, you know, a real Metro, uh, metro route, then yeah. But I'm going to give it a bit of a pass because, to be fair, this is a model route. So maybe we can assume that whoever, I guess, whoever would own this layout in real life wanted some metric coaches, but I guess couldn't find any um, any gallery coaches. So he instead decided to set up the next best thing, get some body by level coaches, paint them into a fictional metro livery, and be like, yeah. So yeah, that's sort of like the head, the uh, the head kind of them going for. I don't actually know why they went with Metra Bombardier by levels, even though and Metra doesn't even use these type of coaches. Uh, but yeah, I guess there's by a bit of kin in there. Um, yeah, the reason why we got these Metra Bombardier by levels is because whoever owns this layout couldn't find any gallery coaches, so he decided to set up for these coaches instead. Um, like I said, those were a real life route. I would absolutely, you know, go lose my mind. But I guess it's fine. And I guess well, yeah. Although. Um, the same thing happened with the um, uh, with the Superliner or the Surfliner coaches, the Amtrak Surfliner coaches. Yeah. All right. Enough rambling about the coaches. Let's actually look at the coaches in more detail then. Um, and you know what? Despite the fact that these coaches are fictional and everything, well, in terms of the livery and things, they do look quite nice. I do actually like this livery. I might even go as far as I actually quite like this livery more than just like the stainless steel livery that the gallery coach would have in real life. So eh, I guess it works out, sort of, kind of, maybe. Uh, do we have an interview in these? Uh, yes, we do. And you can barely see anything out of it. Okay. And yeah, I believe this interview is exactly the same as what we saw on the uh, Amtrak Surfliner from Bardi by Level Coaches. All right, then. Uh, this coach here is exactly the same, but it just look cool. And of course, we also have the, the Bombardier by Level Cab Car, which I believe is pretty much the same one as the Amtrak Surfliner coach, except of course in the Metro livery as opposed to the Amtrak Surfliner livery. Um, yes. So yeah, like I said, while I would have preferred gallery coaches, I guess, you know, looking at this from, you know, the, the perspective that's the model railroad, I suppose this is the next best thing. Alright, let's take a look at the cab interior view, and once again, I believe the cab interior is pretty much... Oh, hang on a second. I think this is the red hand cab. Oh. Yeah, hang on. I th hang on. Did, did, didn't I notice this from the, uh, from the... Hang on, is this a different cab? From the Amtrak Safari cab, or is it the same one? I'm not too sure. Y you guys can look at my review of the California Sunrise route, but I believe this is actually the, uh, the red hand cab or something. Or maybe it is, but I, I don't pretty know, so yeah. Um, alright, well, let's blow the horn. Everything horn. I think this one is actually different uh, from the Amtrak one. I'm not sure though. And the horn, and the bells aren't so bad either. Ah, right, there you go then. Um, so, uh, however, the F40 is not the only Metro look one of here. We also have this, which I'm very excited for. Uh, this is the MP36PH-3C. Um, specifically, this is the uh, number 405 MILW Heritage Unit. So yeah, we got a Metra Heritage Unit here in Train Simulator 3. How cool is that? Yes! All right. Pretty interesting looking unit. Oh, this is, wait, hang on. The Milwaukee Road. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I just had no idea what M-I-L-W stands for. I guess that's Milwaukee Road. I don't know. I'm sure one of you guys will correct me in the comments. But yeah, pretty cool looking unit, this one. I do like the paint scheme and everything. And uh, yeah, pretty cool to have another proper commuter look. What if you're in Train Simulator 3? Interior cab. And yeah, the interior cab is also the correct cab. Uh, you can even tell by the uh, front windshield that, yeah, this is the correct cab that the MP36 actually has. Um, like I said, the cab itself isn't modeled very well. Um, but this is a pretty old cab, so, yeah. Well, these cab controls are accurate, so, yeah. How about that? Alright, now for the horn and bell. 
Hmm, very interesting horn on this one. Okay. And bell. Alrighty then. There you go, that's a metric content included in this route. So, that's all the passenger contents. Now let's get into some freight content. Yeah, because we have a lot of that here in the side on. Uh, first up, we have the ATSF, also known as, I guess, also known as Santa Fe, uh, B40-8W. And I'm not sure if this particular look would have ever been featured here in a train street. I don't know, maybe it has. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but here it is in this one. Uh, once again, a pretty nice looking unit indeed. Um, yeah. Yep, pretty nice looking unit. Alrighty then, so, uh, interior cab. Oh, all the irony, we're back to a static cab, although it might at least be somewhat accurate to this thing. Yeah, not really, but yeah, here is the, what I thought was going to be the F40 cab, and yeah, same old cab that we've had a million times in other trains, so... Yep, glad to see this cab again. Um, and I mean, Grant, it's not a terrible looking cab, but it's not a great looking cab either. I, I, I may not even call this good, but whatever. Alright, horn and bell. And there's a horn and bell sound that you will for a bunch of times in this game. Alright, so on to some actual freight equipment. The camera wants to cooperate with me. What the. Heck, come on. There we go. Ah, it was just that. You stupid. Okay, camera's being silly today. Come on. There we go. Okay, so first up, uh, we have a trio of 73, yeah, 73 put center beam cars. Uh, first up, we have one in the B coal livery, number 730026. So that is this guy here. Quite a long wagon, this one. Long indeed. Wait, is that BC Rail? Wait, is BC Rail? What's B Coal? I have no idea. But a pretty decent looking thing. Yeah. Yep, yeah, there you go. Alright, next is a, another 73 foot set of beam car, this time in the Sioux livery. Hey, okay, see right there. So it's the exact same model, but this time painted red. All right, and finally, uh, the other same three foot, uh, yep, same old, same car, but this time in the TTZX livery. No idea what TTZX is, but there you go. Those guys actually got some uh, cable on it though, so it actually does look a little bit different from the other two. I forgot to mention the um the, the Sioux line Cinnabeam car is numbered six zero 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 nine two. Uh how I believe the numbers on this center beam are random rather than one static number like on the other two. Alright, uh up next we have the uh a JRPX ACF center blow uh, center flow Four bay hopper car. Yep, it's a hopper car. Um, not much I can say, although I do think this one looks pretty good. Ugh, very good, actually. Yeah. Very nice unit, this one. Alright, up next is the ADMX. 20,000 hundred gallon tank car. Um, AJ, that's actually a new thing. Okay, yeah, I don't think this asset has been featured in any previous routes. This is the first time we've seen this particular um, tank car. Nice.
All right, here up next we have a gun, a gondola ACF 50 ton ACL. Okay, yeah, it's a gondola pretty much. But I'm sure all the gondola players will be excited for this one. Alright, and last up in this contest is a caboose. Yeah, so this is the ATSF CE-11 caboose. And a really nice looking Santa Fe red livery. I like the look of this caboose a lot. And we don't really have that many cabooses here in uh, Train Smart 3. So it's nice that we get another one here. Yeah. Very nice looking caboose. Alright, by any chance, does it have a passenger view? It does not. Okay, so unfortunately, you can't ride in this one. Actually, does it have an interior at all? Hang on. I'm gonna investigate. No, come on. Um, no. No, it's totally hollow on the inside. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, well, up next, we have uh, this the uh, BNSF GP38 2. Uh, once again, not sure this has been featured in any routes previously or if this is a brand new thing, but I gotta say, it does look pretty good. Yes. Alright, um, I think that's all locomotive. Okay, look at the roof. All right, interior cab. Um, eh, cab. I believe this is another uh, reused cab from some other local ones, but it's fine, I guess. Not sure this is the actual cab of the GP3-2, but it's cab nonetheless. Oh, it's got the uh, gray stuff, oh, so it's not. Uh, yeah. Okay, so don't turn your head around the wrong way. Actually, even the uh, grayness kind of breaks the version a little bit, but there you go. All right, horn and bell. And same horn and bell as the other locomotive. All right, we'll now have a lineup of six, uh, what they call AS boxcars. Um, so first up, we have one in a BNSF brown livery. Yeah, BNSF brown. All right, up next uh, is Burlington Northern 2. I'm not sure what there's a 2 there, but okay. Yep, Burlington Northern version of this boxcar. Yep, as I put my headphones right to scratch my neck. Yeah, I'm not sure, like I said, I'm not sure if these boxcars have been featured in any other add-ons or if these are brand new. Yeah, I reviewed so many add-ons at this point where I don't even know what's included in what anymore. Oh, well. All right, up next is the AS box car in CNA1. Uh, yeah, once again, I don't know what the one is for, as there's only one of these here in the game, but okay. Another brown lurry, but this time a slightly brighter shade of brown. Also, you just realized this these three have a flat roof, but this next one, or these next two, I think, have a sort of a curved roof. Huh. Interesting. I only just noticed that now. Alright, well anyway, here is the AS box car this time in the CP Rail 4 livery with a uh, bit of graffiti on it. So, yeah, if you like graffiti, here's another one with graffiti on it. Oh, come on. There we go. Alright, oh, yeah, there's even more graffiti on this one. There you go. Oh, yeah, so if you like uh, freight wagons with graffiti on them, here's another one. Alright, next is the same boxcar, but this time in the Sioux Line livery. 
uh, which is all white with red doors. I guess finally we're back to the uh, flat version. Is this the same version as the others? Hang on. Wait, is this the same? Yeah, it's the same. Okay, so we're back to another variant of the other ones. All right, so another, yep, the final AS box car, this time in the TTX livery. All right. All right, and finally another caboose, uh, and it's a different one. This time, the CSX X chassis system bar windows caboose. So there you go, another caboose. Oops, oh, come on, <laughs> stop spoiling. There we go. Okay, another caboose. Yes. This time in the really cool chassis system livery. I was right. I don't think we have any chassis system. Do we have any chassis system look moves in this game? I think there might be one in the uh, Midwestern branch, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm forgetting a lot of previous things. But there you go, at least for here, the system. Caboose, do we have any pads of you? No, we don't. And I believe the interior on this one, once again, is hollow. Although it isn't hollow. Oh, there's some stuff here. I mean, it's so black, but eh, it would have been something at least. Okay, well, that is all the rolling stock they get as well, plus four locomotives, so, uh, but the fun doesn't stop there. We have more locomotives to look at, so, yeah, let's not go through the rest of the locomotives to get in this DLC. So, first up is something a bit surprising. Um, oh, hang on, let's scroll down a little bit on my list. Uh, this is the ATSF Santa Fe FT. Yeah, so this, yeah, that's why I found that the file system was called the FT. Now, to me, this logo looks like a uh, an F unit, although it doesn't look like the F7. It's some other kind of F unit. So uh, you guys are gonna have to let me know what this is and then stuff, because all I see is FT. Uh, but you do this get the A unit and the B unit. So let's take a look at the A unit first. Yeah. Oh, let's try to show all white though. Yeah, that's a little bit weird looking but there you go all right so interior cab oh say we got an interior cab that actually looks quite nice I'm not sure if this cab might be reused from like the, uh, the F7 over in the um, Christmas on Kickstarter County I don't know but I gotta say, it does look very nice. I was actually expecting this thing to have like an old cab, but I guess they decided to switch out the cab for uh, this uh, barn one. Yeah, look at that. Very well detailed, this one. Very well detailed indeed. Alright, horn. That's a very strange horn. Very quiet too. And then I'll be more quiet. Okay, you can barely hear the one in the belt, but there you go. And it also comes with a B unit, so if you want to use this to haul Santa Fe passenger trains in a more realistic way, then you can. Um, although I'm not sure if there are any Santa Fe coaches in this game, so. I don't know. You have to, I think you have to get creative on what pads your coaches you would uh, use thing for pulling. Bah. But yeah, overall pretty cool unit. A, a different kind of F unit, something we don't usually get here in trains. So yeah, once again, let me know what you know more about the football because I don't really know much about it. <coughs> All right. Well, now we have a long line of freight locomotives. Uh, first up is uh, the Burlington Northern SW fifteen hundred flex coil. 
And I believe this is one of the few uh, reused assets um, in this route. I think you can also get this in the uh, short line railroad and maybe another route that I'm not thinking of right now. Uh, but yeah, considering how much new content you get, I can excuse it. Yeah. And overall, it's a pretty cool looking unit. Yes. Alright, interior cab. And yep, interior cab is very nicely detailed. I think we've seen this cab before though, so. I won't spend too much time looking at the details, but there you go. Alright. And of course, with the horn. Very nice one indeed. All right. Okay, so up next, we have another B forty dash AW. This time in the BNSF livery. I think this might. Uh, I think it's the same asset, but just uh, reskinned into BNSF. But hey, that's. Yeah, that's cool. Cool, we got the uh, same look mobile in two different liveries. I'll make for anything lash up. Alright, so interior cab and interior cab is just the same as the other one. Okay. And of course with the horn. And the horn bell same as the other one as well. Alright, next we have this loud guy. Um, this is something a bit uh, interesting. This is a BNSF SC40 dash. No, wait, no. Hang on, wrong one. BNSF GP35 patched. Yeah, this is a Burlington Northern GP35 locomotive, but it's been patched over and is now a BNSF locomotive. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, we got a, we got a uh, locomotive which has been patched over. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, cab is the same, I think, as the others, and turn a bell. Oh, the horns actually did for this one. Okay. Oh, the bell sounds like a P P forty two bell. All right. Well, there you go. We're seeing horn and bell sound on GP thirty five. All right. Well, up next is a uh, BNSF ST 40-2 in the BNSF H3 livery. Not much to say about it other than... I think this is also featured in, in another thing. I think this was actually in the um, Rocky Mountains uh, mission pack thing. So, yeah. Well, here it is in here. Alright, cab. Yet again, same cab as the others. And Horn of Bell. Also reused from the locomotives. Alrighty then. Well, up next we have another SW1500, but this time in the BNSF livery. I'm not actually sure if this uh, model is the same as the Burlington Northern one, although I don't think we've had this look one in the, you know, proper BNSF orange and yellow livery before. But, uh, pretty cool. So, yeah, I believe the uh, Burlington Northern one, you know, Burlington Northern SW 1500, of course, is reused, but this one is new. And cap is same, and let's see about the horn. And 
I think I have heard that one before, which is interesting. And yeah, Bella's fun as well. All right, all right, two little wolves to go, and one which I'm sure you'll be very excited for. This is the EMW SD70 ACE uh, in the Union Pacific uh, CNW 1995 Heritage Scheme. Um, in fact, I believe this is uh, something Northwestern. The writing is so good, I can't even read it, but I'm sure you'll know what this what engine this is. And yeah, quite funny that we got this local here in this game because I just reviewed uh, the uh, real grand version of this local over Train Simulator 2. Well, now we have the CNW, whatever that means, uh, version over here in Train Simulator 3. So yeah, another Union Pacific character unit has joined the Trains Mobile Gang, although it's a Trains 3 rather than Trains 2. Uh, but very nice looking looking locomotive nonetheless. Well, say for the, say that except for the writing, I think. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Chicago, Northwestern system. Wait, Chicago? Oh, is that where we got this locomotive? Ah, uh, get it? Because it's the Chicago route, so we gotta have the Chicago locomotive here. I see what you're doing. All right, let's check the interior and everything. And up oh, yeah, there, it's uh, this one. Uh, wait, it's gonna load as I just. It's gonna be that blurry. Um. No, it's. Yep, okay, I'm not sure if it's good. Oh, there we go. Okay, took a minute, but there we go. Okay, now that these have loaded up, so here you are. Here is the controls of the uh, S70 ACE here. Trains 3. I'm not sure if we've actually had this look up here in Trains 3 before. Maybe we have, but like I said, I'm sure you guys will correct me. Oh, I can't at least tell you this is the first time that we've seen this look up in, you know, this livery. Well, duh, because this is the first time we've gotten a Pacific Heritage Unit here in uh, Trains 3. And now we'll do the horn. And the horn is... Well, it's definitely a horn. E bell as well. Alright, and finally, the last proper look world in this route is actually one that has not reached in a route. Uh, this is the Kansas City Southern AC44 thousand or ADC 4400 C W and I believe this logo was actually previously well I mean it still is is available as a standalone DLC however it has been included in this route yep you do not yeah if you get this route you will get the logo in it I didn't get the DLC version or whatever nope this locomotive that you're seeing right here is included in this route um, and yeah this is the pro train AC 4400 CW and yeah, this might be, well, possibly the best looking look in this round in terms of the detailing. So, yeah, very, very nice looking unit, this one. And, um, yeah, pretty cool. That you don't have to buy this one separately anymore. I can get it as or, as an inclusion here in this route. So, there you go. All right. Uh, interior cab. Uh, just oh, got to give a minute to load. Uh, but the cab though is very, very nice indeed. Um, yeah, it's just taking the time to load. That's more of a game uh, technical thing. But uh, otherwise, yep, very, very nice looking cab on this one. As you come to expect from uh, Pro Train stuff. <laughs> yep, uh, Pro Train, despite being a European developer, they actually do a really good job with these American look motives. So, yeah. Wow, a European developer actually doing good with American rolling stock. Now that's rare. All right, well, let's do the horn and bell on this one. And, okay, horn and bell is pretty much the same as it was on the Norfolk Southern Heritage units and other things, but there you go. So that is all... Almost all of the locomotives and rolling stock they get here, without at least all the proper locomotives and rolling stock. But there is more. As you see over here, we have a few, well, objects. So, first up, we have this thing, which is known as the flying cam. Yep, we have a drivable camera here in Train Simulator 3, and I think this is supposed to be used. For like cinematic stuff um you know i'm sure you guys will know 
you know, several train Simpson creators in the world of, you know, in the world of trains YouTubisms, and, um, I think this is supposed to be like a free roam camera? The only pro- I, I'm, th th this camera's a bit weird though, because here's the thing. This is, this, this, I think this camera is supposed to be like a free roam, you know, free view camera, but the problem is though, is that, you know, for that you would need the other uh, keyboard controls, but of course those only exist in the Trains PC version, whereas here in the Trains World version, I mean, I think the only way to hook up keyboard controls to uh, to an iPad is to, you know, get, actually, actually, that's a really good question. If you if you were to get keyboard controls for an iPad, would you be able to use the capabilities of this camera and potentially make some train stories on mobile? Hmm, interesting. Well. At least as far as I know, though, as long as you don't have a keyboard, though, then you can't actually use the capabilities of this camera, which is a bit of a shame, but, yeah. Oh, by the way, does it have any horns? Mm. Oh, it does. And it's the default thing, okay. Alright, well, surprised that this thing does have a horn and bell, and it's the good old train's horn and bell. How about that? A camera with a horn and bell. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, next we have another camera. This is the Flying Cam PBR, which... It does look different, I guess. And I'm not sure what the difference is in terms of functionality between this and the other camera. Um, okay. Is it drivable? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, cab is nothing. Oh, it's actually locked. Oh, it's actually a lot lower to the track this time, so huh, you can get some pretty cool lowering shots with this one. Uh, okay, does it have a horn and bell? It does, and it's the same. Yeah, it does have a horn and bell, and it's the same as the other camera. And finally, is a look what they can't see. It is the invisible loco. Hang on, I'm gonna have to do some special tricks to get to this one. Uh, hang on, where's the um? All right, where's the invisible loco? Hang on. Is it an ABC order? There it is. You can't see it, but it is there, the invisible loco. Yep, it's there. I, I can assure you that's there. Yep, you can see it in the map, but this look move is invisible. All right, does it have a horn? No, it doesn't. Okay, well, you get an invisible loco, which is drivable. So, yeah, if you want to be a ghost train, then you can. All right, well, for real this time, that is everything. That is all of the content that I get here in the Model Train Chicago route. A whole bunch of stuff that's taken me over half an hour to go through everything. So much content included as well. How about that? So, yeah, several locomotives, several freight cars, so many things. It, yeah, it's, 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 I honestly think it's worth the price tag alone for these trains. But, of course, the trains are only one part of this. We, of course, have the route itself. And, actually, like we did uh, for the uh, Fremont Mills route, we're going to take a close look at all the details and everything. We have a cat here again. Yet, the cat has returned. We've got a table with a bunch of uh, random stuff on it. Uh, oh, trains, the book. That's pretty interesting. We've got this one, Britain's Railway Liveries. Okay. And, um, oh, let's go to German 1. Okay, cool. Um, actually, I'm thinking I'm going to more so pay attention to stuff on the shelves and everything, and we'll get a closer look at the uh, trackside scenery once we get on the road. Uh, but for right now, I'll be going through all the, uh, wait, Pazard Rolling Stock? Oh, that's interesting. Okay, for the section of the video, I'm going to be taking a look at the, uh, the, 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 uh, the side stuff. Oh, we got an upstairs. Oh, so I'm going upstairs. You can't really see the upstairsness, but okay, fair enough. I'm going to counter. Apparently, this route is based in February 2017. Interesting. All right. Um... Okay, we will look at the uh, tracks and series we drive along here, but um, let's actually also interesting up. Yeah, you guys, there are multiple rooms here. There's like a bit of a tunnel section here. It seems to go under like a thing. I don't know. Actually, if we zoom out, yeah, you can see where the door is. Okay. All right, we have another shunting yard and stuff. I think it's actually mostly layout here. Yeah, this room is just uh, layout and stuff. Okay. I tell you, what, I love the uh, Chicago uh, backdrop. That's what definitely does live up to his name of being a Chicago route. Um, anything in here? Actually, I probably should get this out beforehand. Um, not more layout. That looks pretty cool, though, but I don't really take a look at the layout closer inspection. Okay, I think uh, it's just layout for the rest of it. And I think the uh, the actual fun stuff is only in this room here, which is fine. Um, 
All right, let's take a look at the route map then. And here it is. So this is actually a slightly bigger route um, than the uh, Fremont Mills route, which actually allows you to do, um, um, you know, driving and stuff. So, yeah, it's not like the... Um, it's not like the... Wait, what's that? Wait, what's this constant doing here? Oh. Okay, the difficult here as well. Okay, I actually didn't notice that, but okay. Um, but there you go. That! Okay, that is everything. All right. Okay, I think that's enough of looking at what we have to get here. So let's now take a look at the scenarios and finally do some driving. All right, so here are all of these scenarios that I gave with this route, plus my little scenario, you know, as per usual. Uh, so we got two free drive scenarios in night and day. And we also got four free drive scenarios. We have free operations one, two, and three. Uh, plus the Metro Operations Scenario. And I think you can guess which one we're doing today. We're doing the Metro Operations Scenario because it's Metro. I gotta do it. Uh, so if you look at the scenario description, um, operate a Metro commuter train from Chicago Station to Harvard and then back again. Oh, it's a round trip. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right, so I guess this is um, their own little version of Chicago Union Station. All right. And we got the other one there. Yes. Oh, so that's a HD camera angle. All right, you'll be making all stops to stay still on the road, and we'll also be returned to Chicago, follow the objective, and navigate to Nikon to complete the task. All right. Uh, quick note, when servicing the industries or stop at stations, you may lose control of train time really. This is due to that. Yep, that's fine. Uh, approximately 30 minutes. All right. So, let's, um, can we go now? Mm. Okay, this is Chicago. Where is this, actually? Oh, it's... Oh, it's there! Oh, okay. And I guess we're ready to go. Alright, let's go. Alright. Alright, let's go. Oh, things are so quickly. Okay. And. Oh, let's put on the lights. Do we have any ditch lights? Oh, we do! Oh, we got ditch lights! Look at that! That's cool. Alright. Alrighty then, so welcome to Model Train Chicago. Now I'm driving on the route. Um, yeah, like I said, so much content. That took me all 40 or so minutes to get through. I say 40 minutes, yeah, about 40 minutes or something. So, yeah. Yeah, it typically doesn't take me that long to get through all the content, but this route just comes with so much that, well, I had to. And I guess these stuff's are really close to each other. Okay, for, uh, yeah, I don't know what that one is. Alright. So, yeah, um... I have to say, um, this route, already I like it a lot more than the, uh, Fremont Mills route, um, and, um, I guess, uh, yeah, one, like, like I said, uh, this route was actually made by the same guy who made the, um, um, what was it called, the, uh, the Fremont Mills route, um, only difference, of course, that this route is, well, a lot bigger, um, because on the, uh, Fremont Mills route, well, you're really just restricted to, uh, shunting operations and stuff, which can get a bit boring, however, this route... Um, well, this route, you are not just limited to something up first, you can do, well, basically anything. Um, in fact, this route is actually a complete loop, so actually, if you really want, you could actually, uh, run this like a real railway, or a real model railway. Um, you know, surveyor, yeah, you could just, uh, if you really want, you can just go into the, uh, free drive mode, put all the trains down and just turn them, you know, make them into AI trains and just watch them go. So, yeah, it was actually a pretty fun route. Dare I say, this might be one of my uh, favorites here in Train Summer 3. Alrighty, well, um, we've taken a look around at the um, at the fun stuff, so... Yeah, now it's going to drive on the route, and now take a look at the trackside scenery. Look at the way it's got animated cars, and the traffic is high as well. That is definitely Chicago. Oh, they do find a bit where they're doing a, uh, a round trip. Are we going to go all the way up to... I don't know what the next station is. I guess we'll find out. Alright. Oh, we're changing tracks. Okay. All right. Well, let's just um, let's just marvel in the uh, tracks like scenery because there's a lot to see. Yeah, and I guess it could be a round trip scenario. So I guess we're gonna go to one end and then change back. I oh yeah, I think our final destination is uh, Harvard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So speed a bit. Oh, we got a freight train. Yes. Look at that. Let's go through this little section in the wall here. Freight train. How about that? Alright. 
All right, so 20, 20 miles per hour. Yeah, I believe our maximum uh, speed limit on this route is... Oh, we got a train station? Yes. Yeah, maximum speed limit for this route will be 20 miles per hour. Uh, what time flying with, actually? Uh, because, of course, we got a lot of uh, slow curves here. and um, But also, there's just so much stuff to see on this route. So, yeah, you're only going 20 miles per hour, but there's a lot to see, you know. So, yeah. Oh, what's that? Wait. Oh, Test Track. Free DLC. Exclusive Trace Trace with Hey, I reviewed that one uh, when it came out. All right, our first of the day already. This is, uh, station names are disappeared. Let's bring it to a stop here. I do know that these coaches do have animated doors, but do they actually work? Yes, they do. All right. Well, as you stop within the limits of the station, of course, but yeah, okay. At least the doors on the uh, Bombardier by level coaches do work with the stations here on this route. That's a nice detail. And actually, this station looks really cool. I like it. Yeah. Man, yeah, if we had the surveyor, we could make, a, like, a full-size metro route. That'd be really cool. Uh, <coughs> yeah, you know what? When, when we get the uh, surveyor, someone please make the, um, <laughs> make, like, a full-size Chicago route. I mean, I know what, I mean, I know it'll be less realistic with these coaches, but still. Yeah. And all this considered, Metro is a rather underrepresented uh, railroad here in the world of uh, train sims. Um, really, the only other major Metro thing I can think of is the uh, Chicago Railroad route over in Train Smart Classic, which released all the way back in 2016. That's really the only ever time we've gotten Metro represented on a major scale. Otherwise, it's only really ever been, you know, third-party reskins and stuff. Or I say third-party, just freeware reskins, and that's been about it. Uh, but yeah, the only other major metro thing I can think of, yeah, like I said, the Chicago Rave Strike route over a train, so my classic, and that's about it. This is really the only other time that I've gone like a major metro thing of a jig. Well, I say major metro thing, obviously metro isn't necessarily the only thing you get here. You get a lot of different, uh, stuff in here, but I'm mainly here for the metro because I like metro. Um, yeah, I'll get another stop there. Oh, there's a metro train as well going the other direction. Yeah. All right. And yeah, like I said, this route is available for $3, so $2 less than the usual price, and I think it's worth every penny. Yeah, so get this route. It's a good one. And it looks like for here, this route, we only have three coach metro trains, which obviously in real life, they, they typically run more coaches than this, but this is fine because this is a model railroad route, so yeah. All right, also, uh, by the way, let's try to get all the coaches in the platform this time so we can, you know... I mean, stopping accuracy, stopping accuracy doesn't matter in this game, but let's see if we can get as many coaches in the platform as we can to sort of see them all open up. Oh, don't stop yet. Hang on, hang on. Don't stop yet. I'm going to stop in just the right place. So, oh, never mind. The platform's too short anyway. Okay. Well, I guess we'll pull up to the next. Oh, hang on. Stop. Oh, yeah. No, this platform's too short. Oh, well. And the pop. Oh, can see the doors in the entry. Oh, well. All right, so Berkeley or Berkeley is next. Okay, it's actually already here on the other side of the uh, route. So I guess we're gonna get to wherever the final destination is, and then turn back and then go the other way. Okay. All right. Um, okay, station so stop is complete. So let's keep going. I don't see anything after Berkeley. So. Um. I think I think our final stop for this trip is uh, Harvard. Hang on, station stops. Yeah. Okay, it's Berkeley and then Harvard, and then I'll be the last stop, or well, last stop before we turn back to go to Chicago, or Chicago Union Station. Okay. All right. I'll be sure to show you as much of the uh, trackside scenery as I can because there's a lot of it. But you know what? I do think it is really cool that now we have a model train route where it's. Um, you know, you can actually do, like, proper services. Because, like I said, free on mills, it was literally just a yard, so you just restricted to, like, shunting operations. But this route, uh, I think you can, you can do more. You can do proper freight and passenger operations. So, how about that? And, already we're coming up on, uh, wheeling. Okay. Oh, Harvard Subdivision Commuter Edition? Wait, what? Wait, what is that? Well, that's a uh, DLC, I believe, over on the uh, train's PC side. Hmm. Oh, there's the uh, cabooses. 
I guess the caboose would be pretty brought in for the, uh, like, a scenery pieces for this route. But obviously, if you want to, you can use them on, uh, your trains. And I guess one thing I may as well mention, in case you, you know, may not already know. Um, yes, you can use the trains in this route on other routes, so... Yeah, so say if you want to do a metro, uh, metro run on a different route over here in uh, Train Simulator 3, that is perfectly possible. Uh, okay, let's try to get another good stop here with the doors. Uh, once again, the back coach is a little bit too far back, so... Yeah, oh well. Let's go another great crossing, yay! Alright. But yeah, I like how it's just this world is just so littered with detail, you know. It, it, it and it really does feel like a proper model. Oh, there's an MVV Games uh, advert here as well. That is the uh, developers of the Trains series. Yeah, let's keep going onwards. American gas? Oh no, Amerigas. <laughs> okay. I'm about to go back through the uh, wall again. Yeah, I like this too. That's also very realistic. How there's like a little section that's been carved through so we can, you know, go through here. Alright, there's uh, Berkeley. I guess the only slight downside though is that the stations are really close to each other. So you need to start up and then you're already at the next station. And yeah, this route is, I mean... I mean, compared to, like, real world routes, yeah, this route is, you know, quite small, but, you know, this isn't a real world, it's, it's a multi-real route, so, yeah. Things work a bit differently. But overall, yeah, I really like this add-on. Um, I think it's definitely one of the best for, um, you know, here in Trains 3. Alright, can we get the, all the... Oh, this one's gonna be close. Oh, hang on. Ah... I think I could have done it there, but just pulled just a little bit further. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so we really have a red light coming up. And our last stop is over there. Hang on. Wait, this is... Oh. Oh, hang on. I just realized this. So this is the Chicago Union Station itself, which is where we came from. And this is Harvard, which is our last stop. Oh! That is really clever. That is actually really clever. I like how the two terminus stations are right next to each other in terms of, like, the model railroad. That's actually really cool. Oh, dear. Looks like there's been a train derailment. Oh. Ah, with some Penn Central box cars. <laughs> ah, yeah. Penn Central's rubbish. And yeah, I think those are just static assets, by the way. You can't use those. Like, you can't pull those along. Uh, but yeah, looks like there's been a train accident that nobody's bothered to clean up. Huh. Penn Central as well. <laughs> I think Penn Central does make some some sense, because I think, um... I'm not sure of this, but did Penn Central operate all the way over to Chicago? Wait, no, yeah, they did, because New York Central did too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 New York Central did operate trains between New York and Chicago, and of course, then Penn Central, of course, you know, was the merger. So yeah, Penn Central would have operated... Uh, all over to Chicago. And, um, I guess some of their boxcars have been left behind after that, so... Yeah. Well, I found out the, uh, one part of this part that we're actually not gonna drive on in this scenario is the, uh, the part with the, uh, the big yard, but... I'm sure you guys saw enough of that big yard when we were there. Uh, when we did the bit. But here we are, then, at the terminus station, uh, for the Metro Trains. And, um... Yeah, I suppose now we're going to turn around and go back to Chicago. Our right, Chicago station, which fun of is literally right there. <laughs> but of course, you can't get there if you're a model passenger because, um, well, there's a big gaping uh, void there, which is where the door is. But I think that's actually pretty cool. I was wondering how they were going to like simulate like a metro service here on this route, and yeah, like like I just I love how the two terminal stations are like right next to each other in terms of like. The in reference to the layout, that's really cool. All right, so I'm gonna wait one minute, and yeah, then we're driving from the cab car. So yeah, yeah, like I would just <laughs> yeah, here it is, Chicago Union Station, which is where we literally came from. 
It's actually a pretty interesting rare edition of Chicago Chicago Union Station. Obviously, it's not a full sized Chicago, but you know, like like I said, there's a model railroad, so yeah. All right, so um, come on. Okay, I know said wait one minute, but this minute sure is going by at an eternity. Come on, hurry up. I want to go. Oh, it's a uh, freight train. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Took you a long minute. <laughs> Took you about a minute. Um, perform the return trip back back to Chicago while making stops at all the stations. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'll be doing this. Uh, there we go. And now the lights in the cat quest turned on. All right. Here we go. All right, back the way we came. And I believe that freight train is actually waiting for us. Yeah, okay. Uh, or is he? Wait, that's a red light. Uh oh, stop! Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Oh, never mind. We're waiting for this freight train, which I think is the same one that we saw earlier. Okay, I guess we'll watch him go by. All right, well. Okay, good thing I noticed the red there, because, oh boy, if we went to the red, well, the scenario would have been over, and that would have been no good. Now, right, there he goes. Yeah, this is more of the boxcars that you gave with this route. I guess while we're here, actually, I want to actually show you something to do with the, uh, with the cat in the other room, since we didn't see it. Yeah, so that Santa Fe locomotive, it's actually, um... On this table, like in this route, it's actually just uses the uh, static piece, and the uh, cat is very curious about it. Team touching locomotive. Yeah, look at this locomotive. I want to play with it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we got a giant cat who is very curious about this Santa Fe unit, as am I. Funnily enough. All right, back to our train then, and then I guess we are now. Up, oh, the light's still red. Oh, some singing. Oh, this it was. Oh, there's a Popeyes there. Look at that. Alright, well, I think our line is set, but we can't go yet because of the... the... Wait a minute, I can hear singing. Where is that coming from? It sounds kind of like the, uh, the, 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 the Christmas thing from the... Um... From that Christmas on Kickstarter's County Center that we played. Hmm. Alright, well, if this stupid scene would ever turn green, come on. Oh, you go faster. Oh, another train. Oh. Okay. Alright, can I go now? Yes, we can. Okay. Alrighty. Back on the main line. Oh, don't speed. Yep, yeah, even on model railroads, we still have speed limits. Oh, okay, up to 20. Actually, not too far because we got the uh, signal before the station. It's a bit weird. And the cars are right into the wall. Okay. Alright, wait, that is... Wait, what is that? McLean Distribution Center. Huh. Alright, well, let's not go too fast here because of the red light. Oh, never mind. We can we can uh, pull through. I apologize. My commentary is a little bit fast in this video. I don't know what's up with me today. Maybe maybe it's just because I'm so excited about this route. And yeah, I will admit that Chicago, this this route, one of the best here in Trains Three. 
Also, another funny thing, this route was also made uh, by the same guy who made the uh, Swayfield Branch route. I think his name is actually, um... I don't remember. Something Hawaii Mother Train Zedons or something. I don't know. Um, okay, can we start from just the right place this time? Yes! Oh. Wait, did the, did the cap car doors not open? Oh, that's a shame. But yeah, um, Hawaii, or, I don't know. Um, hang on, let me check. I think, yeah, he's, uh, Ho High Watmar, I don't know. <laughs> he's, uh, actually quite active in the, uh, in the, uh, Trains Discord server. So, actually, if you want to, uh, talk to him, yeah, like I said, he's quite active in the, uh, Trains Discord server, so, there you go. I actually, uh, remember... Not too long ago, actually, in the uh, Trains Discord server, someone actually requested a bunch of Metro content to be added into uh, Trains 3. Um, I wonder if Mr. Hawaii Martyr saw them and was like, okay, I can do that, and made this route with a bunch of uh, Metro stuff, so, yeah. Oh, there we go, the uh, B40, uh, whatever. How about that? We've got the Lash, we've got the BNSF livery, and the Santa Fe livery. How about that? I was just commenting on that last up like before in the um, beginning. That's got a pretty cool mixed freight concept there. How about that? Cool long train. Yeah. I guess one thing that is worth saying though, in terms of the uh, the freight stuff, um, there is only really one big yard in this route. So let's say if you were to do a freight run this route. You basically just have to do a complete loop of this route. Like, you basically, you know, you start in the yard, then you drive the loop of the route, then you finish in the yard. Or you just do as many laps as you want, I guess. I don't know. Um, but I'm sure you guys will have a lot of fun with this route. Alright, let's stop again. Yeah, this, this platform is real. Hang on, stop. Okay, this time... Oh, they do open. Oh. Oh wait, but the back back door didn't. Is is that a bug? Okay, so the doors in the cab car are animated. So like, can you only open up the doors on two cars at a time or something? I don't know. Okay, well we're still waiting here. There we go. All right, next up is Manhattan, which is interesting. Is that real? There's actually a station in Chicago called Manhattan. Because Manhattan is in New York. Huh. I don't know. Speaking of New York, I may as well mention this. Um, you may have heard that there was a uh, little earthquake um, in New York on uh, Friday. Which, fun of the same day I'm actually recording this on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I typically uh, record these uh, trains videos on Thursdays. Although this week was a little bit strange. So I'm recording this on a Friday instead. Um... And, uh, yeah, it just happens I'm recording this video on the same day as the, uh, New York earthquake. And in case you're wondering if I actually felt the earthquake, yes, I did. Um, despite the fact that the earthquake, I guess, was primarily in New York, um, I did actually feel it despite being 150 or so miles away in Rhode Island. So, yeah. Now, you know, you, know, you wonder what happened. I typically sleep until about, like, midday, right? But for some reason, my body decided to wake me up briefly at 10.30 or something. Hmm. I wonder if the universe was like, you know, hey, Frony, there's a uh, there's about to be an earthquake. Would you like to get up for a minute to feel it? And yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, so basically, but I went to sleep, obviously, last night, like I do, or early this morning, technically, on Friday. And then I woke up for a brief moment when the earthquake was actually happening. I actually felt it. And then I went back to sleep right after that for another couple hours. <laughs> and, um,. Yeah, then woke up a couple hours later and then got ready to record this video. Okay, so the front doors are animated. Or the doors on the cap car are... Yeah. They're animated. They just don't work all the time for some reason. Um, Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. This earthquake came out of nowhere. Um, Yeah. I wasn't expecting it at all. Also, I just realized that there's a uh, Amazon Prime Trailers 
Huh. There you go. Okay, uh, oh, next up is Bright Wood. Um, so I guess one thing worth mentioning though, um, if you live in the uh, Northeast United States, uh, let me know if you also felt the earthquake too. I know, um, uh, our, uh, Ryan, who, um, also is close by New York, he felt it as well. He actually lives in, um, New Jersey, which is, uh, also not too far from New York. Um... In fact, yeah, I think, I mean, I was actually seeing it on Twitter as well. I think pretty much everyone in the Northeast felt that earthquake. Um, yeah. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, um, at least in my area, there was uh, no damage whatsoever. Um, overall, it was a very mild earthquake. You know, not like the ones in Japan or something. I think actually there was an earth there was actually an earthquake in uh, Taiwan. Um, not too long ago either, and I think uh, the earthquake there was a lot more severe. Like there was a lot of damage done over in uh, Taiwan. Um, but thankfully over here, our earthquake was very mild. Um, actually, I'm not sure how much done. I, I, I think the uh, the uh, the main um, the earthquake itself really happened over in New York. Oh, yeah, there's the uh, Metro Heritage Unit. How about that? <laughs> I love that they actually put this unit here as well. That's really cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure how much damage was done in New York, though, but at least, you know, from where I'm at, yeah. I mean, it did shake. It did shake the ground, but not enough to cause, like, a, like, damage or anything. I don't know. <laughs> but, like I said, if you live in the Northeast, you know, Northeast of the United States and you felt the earthquake, let me know. Was, like, any damage, or did you just feel the shake, or was it nothing? I don't know. Alright, well, here we are, then, at, uh, ooh, that's... Train came to stop quick. Train came to stop quick. quickly there. How about that? And uh, wait a minute. Okay. Oh, this time the uh, window, the uh, doors in the uh, back to coach is opened up. Okay. All right. Those are our last stop before reaching uh, Chicago. Wait, no. Is it? This is Wrightwood. No, this is Manhattan. I don't know. Hang on. Where is? Oh no. I think next up is Chicago Union Station. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, no. Next up is Chicago Union Station. And that'll be the end of the scenario and this video. Um, yeah. Also, yeah, something else I actually noticed on the news. Um, apparently the earthquake that was in New York was actually the worst earthquake that they had in 150 years. And yeah, like, you know, earthquakes in general in the United States are very rare. I think unless you live in, um... California. I think in, okay, no, I think in California, earthquakes are a bit more common. But at least here in my corner of the world, here in all these earthquakes are very, very rare. Like they basically don't ever happen, apart from you know occasions like today, or well, two days ago. As of what you're watching this video, because I'm recording this video on Friday, but we'll be posting it on Sunday. So yeah, I'm just blabbing about random stuff at this point. <laughs> Alrighty then, well, as we're about to approach Chicago, um, yeah, it's been another long video here on trains, but I'm sure you guys like the long videos. Or... Actually, no, you know what's funny? The uh, the longer videos actually tend to perform better than my shorter ones, so, yeah. With a super long video, going through all the content, and then driving throughout most of the route. Obviously, we miss off a, uh, a slight section, you know, like the big yard, but, oops, we're speeding a little bit. But, um... Yeah, you guys saw that when we were doing the, uh, showing off the content. And, um, yeah. So, yeah, Chicago, model trains route here in Train Summer 3. This route is a certified banger. And I definitely recommend picking it up if you're interested in this kind of... Oh, ah! Balls. I was trying to slow down for the speed limit, but the train sped up for some reason because I can't drive. Oh, no whistle. That is a quiet zone. Yes. Um, so yeah. Um, I think that's all there is to say. Well, good, as we're now just about to arrive at Chicago Union Station. Uh, it's going very slow here, though. 
but we are going through the yard, so there you go. No, there's the other uh, F40 Metra trainisms. And welcome back to the model train version of Chicago Union Station. Oh, wait, what the? Wait, SPAD? Um. What? Wait, SPAD. I, 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 you may have noticed, you may not have noticed, but I said SPAD over on the top right, so. Oh. Okay. Well, luckily I didn't fail the scenario there. Oh, right, well, here we are. And, alright, let's come to a stop right about here. And here we are. That is it. Oh, the other doors open up here? Oh, they all did. Okay. Hmm. So I guess the station has to be just long enough to actually open up all the doors. Okay. Alright, well, I guess I'm going to wait a minute for the scenario stuff to actually end. Oh! Wait, what? <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Uh, did you enjoy the run? Check out the Metro Cab reverse between the Harvard Subdivision when it was being built. Oh, interesting. Okay, well, I guess if any of you guys want to check that out, then you can. And... Oh, that's it. Okay, session complete. And there's the final score, 110 points. Good job, mate. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in whatever I make next.